Y'all ready to get busy? What's up, guys? It is time for the Beastly Thought Show live. It's not time, actually. It's an hour and a half early. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. If you're tuning in at 6 o'clock and you're seeing this is a recorded version of the show, sorry. My bad. <laughs> I had Our a scheduling bad. conflict. Uh, luckily, Beastly and Robbie were kind enough to adjust their schedules uh, to match up. But after this show, if you want to go over to Twitch... We are going to be uh, live streaming. Uh, the Planet Destiny guys and I are going to be live streaming uh, for Extra Life. So I'll put a link in the show notes for that if you'd like to check it out. Uh, that's a really cool cause. It's basically uh, paying money, you know, uh, donating money to uh, help uh, children in uh, children's hospitals. So that's going to be a ton of fun. But right now, we got a lot to talk about. I'm not going to ask you guys what you've been playing because I already know. <laughs> Yeah. So do you want to just jump into it and let's talk about the game at hand? Yes, let's talk about Black Ops 3. Oh, oh, I thought we were talking about Destiny. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Bad part. All right, Ops Black 3. Ops 3 came out on Friday, which was freaking weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's out, <laughs> and uh, we've gotten a chance to play it. Uh, how long have you guys gotten to, gotten to put into this? Uh... I probably put at least, I would say, eight hours in on the game. I think I've put in a, a solid six hours into the campaign so far. Robbie? I'd say about ten hours total. Probably most of that is multiplayer and zombies, which I both extremely, extremely love. And, yeah, that's, I'd say about that. All right. So I'm, I'm, I'm by far the lowest. I've probably put in about four hours, and I've only played multiplayer. Uh, I downloaded it late. I downloaded it on Saturday. I met you guys online, and you got Salty Briar, big time. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Activision was definitely having some server issues yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so today, we're recording this on Sunday. The game came out on Friday. I downloaded it on Saturday, uh, and today is Sunday. I already said today mm -hmm. is Sunday. So, yeah, I mean, the, the game was not running well on Saturday at all. Uh, but... I got a chance to play it today, and I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the game. What do you guys think about it so far? Awesome. I'm happy to hear that. I, I honestly have been impressed with it from the moment I uh, installed the initial game. I started off on the single player, uh, the campaign. My wife and I, Robbie, you actually were there at the very beginning with us, yep. and uh, we started playing that. I really enjoy it. The story leaves a lot to be desired. I, it's one of those situations, in the campaign at least, where you're just playing it because you enjoy going going through wave after wave of enemies. Yeah. After a while, you start to realize that the story doesn't matter and you really don't know what the hell you're doing. It's becoming one of those convoluted type of situations where there's so much going on that you really don't want to follow the bouncing ball. Mm -hmm. you, just want, you just want to keep tapping X and, and get to the next campaign mission. Uh, but after we spent maybe about five or six hours into the campaign, we went to the multiplayer. First we went to Zombies. Okay, now it's Zombies. And uh, we went to multiplayer afterwards. And I was there with you, Briar, yesterday. And we saw little network issues. We were unable to join parties. We were unable to get online. And uh, one good thing I'll say about the situation is that Activision did uh, tweet out that they were having issues during an update. And they fixed a problem in relatively short time. I'd say probably 10 minutes we were able to get back on. Well, and I was that, having the problem for longer than 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't. I tweeted it out. It took them about 10 minutes to sort it out. But I was definitely having the problem for longer than 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, and, and i got to say, this is... By far the most, for me at least, the most authentic Call of Duty feel I've had since Black Ops 2. It feels like the true, uh, uh, the, the growth of Black Ops 2. Of course it's Black Ops 3, but we've gone through so many other incarnations of Call of Duty. We went through Ghost, Advanced Warfare, that all seem to diverge into their own directions. This seems to be the true evolution of what Black Ops 2 was for me. I love the traversal. I didn't get any netcode issues. I know mm -hmm. that you were having a lot yesterday yeah. where you were you were getting shot from around corners with those boomerang bullets. And uh, <laughs> I didn't really run into much of that. For me, it felt a lot like Black Ops 2. And I know that throughout history, you said Black Ops 2's netcode was one you didn't like. I personally really always enjoyed Black Ops 2's. And I didn't have any issues with it. But for, so far from what I played, I really enjoyed it. The multiplayer is phenomenal uh, from what I played so far. I did spend maybe another hour, hour and a half last night with Mr. Robbie and our good friend Unreal Gamer, the Mr. Salvo, nice. last night. And uh, we played uh, some more zombies, the four of us, and we uh, got on for about an hour, hour and a half, but it was a hell of a lot of fun. And so, so far from what I played, I'm looking forward to fleshing out uh, and, and basically leveling up my character, unlocking all the weapons and perks that I need. It feels like Call of Duty again. I'm really happy that I got this game. 
All right, Robbie, what are your initial impressions here? How, how are you feeling about the game so far? So, coming off of the beta back in August, I was extremely positive about this game. I was like, this is going to bring me back into Call of Duty, and this brings me back from Advanced Warfare. This feels like Call of Duty again. And here's the thing. Advanced Warfare wasn't a bad game at all. It was a great change-up for Call of Duty. It felt fresh and fun, but the problem was the Exo move was just way too crazy and convoluted. It got so frustrating after about a month of playing that game, I just had to put it away. This game, the movement is fantastic. I love the way you can wall run. I love when you pop off a wall run, you come down on a guy and gun him down. That is the most satisfying thing in the world. The movement all chains together. It feels amazing. I think the maps are awesome, too. Like, there really aren't any maps that I haven't liked so far. They're all great. Agreed. Agreed. There's, yeah. there's one. Okay, so it's like, I'm not sure if it's a mall or a factory. I can't tell, but it's bright white inside. Like, the indoor area, I think it's like an H pattern yeah. with, like, crosses, and there's, like, I, I think there are either sidewalks or conveyor belts that are just set, like, waist high, like, below. So, like, you walk in, and you're up here, and then there's, like, this... H pattern kind of going like this that's a little bit lower, like some tracks. I do not like that map. It's like you, it's too hard to keep an eye on all the different angles you need to do whenever you're in there. But other than that, i got to agree with you. I like I like all the maps so far. i, I got a quick question, guys. we got to talk about the map that has the buildings going straight up, like Inception style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Inception. There, yeah. there is a crazy map for the guys who haven't played this game in multiplayer where basically you're on flat terrain, but if you look over to your right or your left, there's a whole neighborhood going straight up vertically. <laughs> and and uh, when you go to the far end of the, the map, you can actually run through some of these houses and buildings sideways. So you're basically on the wall, and you look next to you, there's tables and shit on the wall and furniture. It's, it's just a crazy feeling. It just makes me feel like the movie Inception. I think that the level design is very unique, and it, it really suits the gameplay and the traversal method perfectly. And it complements the movement, too, yes. which is the most important part. Like, Advanced Warfare, it just didn't make any sense. You're spamming, jumping, you're boosting all over the place. It didn't feel consistent. It's, it's this like was much more consistent. To me. It's like in this one, uh, you can wall run pretty much on any wall. And uh, there isn't just random walls everywhere. It all seems to make sense. You know, if you're the kind of person who wants to get to the other end of the map very quickly, there are multiple options for you to do that. You can run down certain walls, sliding. It's just, it feels really good. I'm really happy with it so far. I know we had the same kind of consensus the day, well, I know that Robbie and I did the day after uh, Advanced Warfare came out. We quickly changed our minds. I don't think that's going to happen here. It feels really good to me. So I'm not so sure. I'm not I'm not positive about this yet. Uh, I put in, like I said, maybe four hours around that. I've played some multiplayer. My initial experience was pretty negative because you the next was... Me. Oh, very my God. It was, it was bad. Like, okay, so here's what was happening, right? A guy would come around the corner, and as soon as I saw him, I was dead. And that very much reminded me of the Black Ops 2 days where there was a real problem with that game where... They're basically two representations of each player character. There was one that you saw as yourself, and there was one that your opponent saw. And the one your opponent saw was just half a second behind the one that you saw. So what would happen is it really, it really favored rushing players. So if you came around a corner and started firing, by the time the person around that corner sees you, you're, he's already dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I have a strong su- suspicion that the same thing is happening here. I have very mm-hmm. strong suspicion that the same thing is happening in this game. The netcode in this game feels almost exactly like Black Ops 2. I will say today, yesterday I was finding that I had about 160 milliseconds worth of ping in like every lobby I got into. Today, the ping is much better and I'm finding that that isn't as much of an issue. I find that the gunfights are a little more fair. Uh, hit markers are happening when I expect them to happen. Yeah. Uh, but I, based on my experience yesterday, I have a, fun, a sneaking suspicion that the netcode actually hasn't changed that much from Black Ops 2. Uh, and that could be an issue going forward. Also, the traversal. Traversal. I like what they've done with the traversal. This game doesn't feel like Call of Duty to me. It feels like it's taken a little bit of Black Ops, a lot of Black Ops 2, a little bit of Titanfall, a little bit of Destiny. Mm-hmm. I kind of melded all this stuff together. I mean, there's there's a ton of Titanfall. The wall running feels like it's almost directly out of Titanfall. Um, the double jumping feels very similar as well, although it's it's subdued compared to Titanfall. And the, the way that... Hold on just a second. 
the way that you basically pop your special abilities. I think they're they're special abilities, right? They're not called yeah. supers, but they're yes, they swept. Fucking similar to the Destiny Simple <laughs> Supers. I mean, one one girl's basically got the golden gun. Uh, another guy's basically got the fist of panic. Uh, so they feel very similar, although there's a pretty wide range of them, and they don't feel it all that overpowered. Like the one shot kill gun, the one shot kill bow. Uh, you, you don't feel like you're just running around just. Uh, Completely invulnerable. They you know? take so, a lot of skill to use because you can easily miss your shot, and then you're going to be taken out immediately because the mm-hmm. time to kill in the game is so fast paced. Yeah. Like it's definitely not easy. Now, uh, Briar, you didn't get a chance to play any of the campaign, or you didn't play zombies. No, I won't play the campaign. Experience. I don't play campaign in Call of Duty games. It's been well, well, let me terrible just say this. since I can remember. Well, let me just say this. <laughs> I believe, like I said previously, that the campaign is a little convoluted, and it's something that a lot of people aren't going to play. But one thing that yeah. I will say is that they've made it more enjoyable with the ability to play with up to three friends. I think that Activision, like you said, is kind of taken from a lot of different teapots and pulled it together to make this super badass uh, cup of tea. Um, They've done a lot. If you ask me, they've taken a lot from Destiny, the fact that you can go through the campaign with your friends. Uh, That was really fun, playing with Robbie, playing with Kate. In previous uh, Call of Duty games, there's been like Spec Ops, Split screen type of modes where you can basically go to horde mode with your friends, couch co op, uh, and they've kind of toned that back and actually given you the ability to play uh, the campaign co op. I think that's really awesome, and it adds to the whole, the overall social aspect of the game. I think they've seen the phenomenon that, Des- that, that Destiny is, and uh, they want to capitalize on that by making this more in line with what the Destiny formula is, and that's at least my take on it. The yeah, but the problem you know, is, is that people say, oh, they copied Destiny, they copied this game, but what if it makes the game better? Like, if it still feels like Call of Duty, and they add more to it, is that really an issue? Because if it makes the game better, like, I feel like the specialists make the game more interesting, and I think this game does feel like Call of Duty multiplayer. That's where I kind of disagree with you, Briar, but I definitely agree with you about the net I'm code. not sure it does make it's, the game better. I'm not positive yet. Uh, you know, like, I, I'm having fun with it right now. Uh in a month, I'll answer that question. Does it make it better? You know, like, yeah. in a month, I'll, I'll answer the question, are these maps good? In a month, I'll answer the question, uh, do, do I like the way the traversal works around the level? I'm definitely not ready to make any decisions like that now after four hours of play. You know, yeah. Call of Duty multiplayer is something that people play for a year. Mm-hmm. And often, in fact, almost every year, there's multiple tweaks that have to be done to make it you know, a, a level playing field. And I'm positive, especially with the specialist stuff, that we're going to see that have to happen uh, over the next few months. But right now, it's fun. Uh, as long as you got a good connection, it seems like the netcode is decent. Uh, and that's a big deal with Call of Duty and these yeah. fast, twitchy, uh, time, fast time to kill games. Yeah. Um, I like the weapons. The weapons all feel good. After coming from Destiny, i got to say, every weapon feels the same to me. They all feel like laser beams. <laughs> like every weapon, like you point it and the guy's dead. <laughs> like there's yeah. no recoil. Uh, I, you know, I sort of miss the old days of Call of Duty, like uh, Black Ops, or uh, yeah, especially the first Black Ops, where there's actually recoil on the weapons, and it took a little bit of skill to kill somebody. I miss those days in Call of Duty. Uh, I miss the days where, you know, there was a little. I, I always felt like Call of Duty had a nice blend of. You know, speed, but also tactical gameplay. And I yep. feel like as the game's gone on, especially in the last few years, or last two years, it's moved more towards speed and less toward tactical gameplay. Yeah, and I agree I, with that. And I'm wondering, I'm, I'm wondering if that's kind of, that's where it's losing me, really. It's like, uh, you know, an old man like me can only be so fast with those thumbsticks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. fast. You Especially know? playing Destiny, so much I can imagine. Like, this game... Because, yeah, Briar, you were playing yesterday when I, I was telling you, like, they're updating the servers. I, I know what you mean. The netcode is a little inconsistent right now, but I'm telling you, on Friday, like, the time to kill, you were melting people. Cause oh, today, so today bullets. the time to kill was right there for me. Yesterday, yeah. I was shooting people, and it was, like, a half second later, I'd hear the hit markers. You know how, you know, your bullets go, and this is a hit scan game, meaning that there is no bullet travel time in this game. Yeah, no bullet travel but time. I, the hit, the hit scan markers, like that hit marker that you hear that means you're connecting with your opponent, was literally happening like half a second later. Like it was that Whoa. slow. That's, that's Damn. Yeah. Yeah, that was nasty. 
it was bad. It was it was a bad first impression that I got from Call of Duty. I'll be honest with you. I was telling you because you and were so upset. You're like, this game hard sucks. Hard. I'm like, give it a chance. Give it a chance. Trust me. Like, well, I, I'm yeah. I'm giving it a chance, and I'll continue to give it a chance. Uh, Proud of you. I'm, Good job. I'm not. I am not blown away by this game. I'll be honest with you. I'm okay. having fun with it, but I'm not blown away. Everybody's going to have different opinions. I, Absolutely. This, this yeah. is my my favorite of the last three for sure. Um, I'm enjoying. I, I really enjoy the fact and admire the fact that Treyarch has kind of given some some degree of control to the gamer. They brought mm-hmm. back uh, theater mode, which is great. I yeah, think. that is really good news. If you if you're playing a game, you want to save it and upload it somewhere. You don't have an Elgato, or maybe your Elgato, like I was talking to Robbie, maybe it's not plugged up right then. You could bookmark that game and go back to it. I really enjoy the fact that they've added the ability to paint your guns and kind of make your own design. We saw some badass guns. The paint was sweet. Yeah. That green gun, I still want to know how he did that. It looked like it was made of green now later. I didn't make that. That's a pre-order camel. It's called the Weaponized 115. Oh, okay. I, I should have known you'd know that. And I also am really happy that we've got our player cards back. Uh, I made a really nice one. And now you can kind of go to this... So many dicks section. on that player card, BC. It's really... Yeah, I, I'm it's not... I don't want to see man. Like two, uh, three dicks, that's okay. But, man, you get way over the dick limit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a dick limit. They, but they've actually taken the player card uh, aspect of Black Ops 2 and made it a little bit better because now you can go to the media section and see the top trending paint jobs, player cards. You can upload yours and, and publish it for people to see it, and they can vote you up. And so I think that's really cool. Every now and then, I did it today a couple of times, I did it yesterday. I'll just go to the media section and I'll look at the top and see some of the most awesome original ideas. And there's some really talented people making these player cards. You got twice as many slots as you did in Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2, you had 32 slots. Now you got 64, which really opens up much more ability for you to get in there and tinker with art. So I'm happy with what I've seen so far. I really enjoy zombies. Uh, I haven't had the netcode issues yet. Uh, that you guys yeah. have, that you I've guys had minimal had. netcode issues, but it's been really solid for the most part. Like, I have had a couple times where it feels like it takes a lot of bullets to kill people because the hit markers are just slightly mm-hmm. delayed. But for mm-hmm. the most part, it's been really solid. Like, stupid fast time to kill, and that's because the hit detection is really good. Like, it's definitely a lot better than Black Ops 2. It's not perfect. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say it's as good as Ghosts. That had the best netcode by far. Yeah, but I just wish that... Why it's close. Activision just take the netcode from the... From the tr- uh, not from the from the Infinity War Infinity games, War. just give it to everybody. Like it's definitely better though. So better, it's so much better. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about that like boost slide? It's awesome. Love it. <laughs> it's like it's like an OP man. Like, have you used it with a shotgun yet? No. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> yeah, use it with a shotgun. <laughs> it's so unfair. You just go slide in through a door, pop, dead. Yeah. Okay, next door, pop, dead. <laughs> I love using it to go around corners because nobody's mm-hmm. expecting you to slide out. And, right, and they're all sliding, aiming kind of head height or chest height, so they yeah. go right over you. It's, it's really fun. I'm enjoying it. I guess time will tell how much we actually do enjoy it. But um, I'm happy to, to be playing it right now. I'm a little underwhelmed with the story, and uh, luckily for Briar, he's not ever going to play that. <laughs> but I, I do enjoy the fact that you can at least indulge in that with your friends, family, whatever. And once you yeah. beat the, the single-player campaign... You can play through it again with a B-rated storyline called Nightmare, which is all about zombies. So you can play through the cool. entire campaign again in zombie mode with a whole new story about zombies. That's, that's awesome. cool. That that's what I really want to do. That's why Kate and I want to beat it because we want to play this B movie, huge worldwide infection, and uh, play through the entire campaign with zombies. To me, that's really cool. Can I uh, put in about the campaign really quickly here? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So here's the thing. Multiplayer is phenomenal. I'm having a blast with it. I love it. Zombies is also amazing. We might talk about that a bit more. Uh, love it. The campaign sucks. It's really, really disappointing because I loved Black Ops 1 and 2's campaigns. They were a lot of fun. Uh, the story was excellent. I really enjoyed them. Like They were phenomenal. This campaign is such a letdown for me. The story, it doesn't make any sense. First of all, how can you call this Black Ops story when it doesn't connect to the previous games? The, the same characters aren't here. It doesn't feel like it's the same universe. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't really give a shit about what's going on. And i got to be honest, I'm bored playing it. Like, it's just another shooting gallery. It's the same Call of Duty campaign I again. So I'm, I agree. I'm tired of it. And the last campaign I actually finished with Call of Duty was Black Ops 2. And it took me till like, a month before Ghosts came out to do it. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just not interested. The, those stories haven't been good, I don't think, until since uh, Modern Warfare 2. Well, yeah. the campaign uh, situation with myself and Kate was we played it. It was beautiful and sparkly and new. Uh, we saw, you know, new cut, cut scenes and set pieces. And after a while, we realized we didn't really know what we were doing or we didn't care about who we were going to save or who we were going to kill. And when that realization hit us, we were like, eh, you want to go to multiplayer? Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's, let's go to multiplayer. We're not really having that much fun here. And so I agree with you there, Robbie, that the story is just shooting gallery after shooting gallery, yeah. you know, wave after wave after wave of enemies. You do get these new specialist abilities that you don't get during the multiplayer. I like that they introduced new abilities, too, like the Firefly Swarm and being able to, like, stun robots. Like, that stuff's really cool, but it's not enough for me. It still feels like the same shooting gallery. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the idea, but it's just not enough. It wasn't implemented well enough. I agree. I agree. I think the story definitely needed more work. But most people are buying this for the multiplayer, and I think it shines there, so. Yeah. So uh, I I gotta say something about the uh, controls a little bit. I was a little bit disappointed that they didn't take that control scheme for the boosting from uh, Advanced Warfare. I thought that was ingenious way of doing that, and I was a little I was I, I was sad that they didn't do that because what it allowed you to do is keep your thumbs on the thumbsticks while you were kind of in the air. Yeah. And with this, I mean, a scuff controller with this game, holy shit, you want a That's scuff what controller? I use. Yep. Yeah, you want a scuff controller because you're going to be jumping around a lot and you're going to want to keep your hands on it because you can shoot and be in the air. Like, you're pretty I'm accurate when you do it. scuff is awesome. I've been using my scuff 4PS and it's been fantastic. Yeah, the guys, to work the guys out who have had an Xbox year. Elite controller are going to be happy with their purchase for this game. Uh, and if you got a scuff for the PlayStation 4, I mean, you're in the air and you, you want to be jumping and shooting an awful lot in this game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it really does help a lot. And... I mean, this game is packed so full of content. Like, this has got to be the most feature-packed Call of Duty. Like, every year, they try and raise the bar higher. They add more stuff to multiplayer, more stuff to zombies. Like, it's just getting ridiculous. Yeah, but, it, you know, it all it feels so disconnected. Like, my, my, my progress in zombies isn't going to affect my progress in multiplayer. My progress in... It does. My progress... How does it affect it? Because you earn, like, uh, different emblems and calling cards, and they go across all three modes. Like, you earn okay. different That doesn't make any difference. It's all cosmetic shit. Yeah, it is mostly cosmetic, but there is yeah. different stuff, you know. Like, I, I think that... I th- I'd like to see Call of Duty kind of move forward into, you know, having, having some connection between these things now. You know, like the zombie mode, the campaign mode. They got this new, like, running mode in this game where you can yeah. run these, like, obstacle courses, which is actually kind of cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah that's free fun. run. Yeah. It is pretty cool. I tried it. I only tried the first course out, but it, it was pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. I can see him doing some interesting stuff with that free run mode. I'm definitely s- interested to see how this game evolves over the next few months, though. Like, because we're on the honeymoon stage right now. There's no doubt about it. Like, it's pretty much all positive. Other than the campaign, I think the game is phenomenal. And like, who knows? Like, even in a couple days, someone might find the overpowered gun and start using that and exploit each other. But we don't know what that is yet, but I'm sure it'll happen. Something will get balanced. Something will become overpowered, and then. I'll tell you, it almost doesn't matter what gun I use. They all seem like they have a time to kill. That is just insane. Yeah, the balance thing is amazing, though. The like Weevil? I was using the Weevil today? Holy shit. The thing was melting people from across the map. It's a submachine gun. It's just melting people from across the map. <laughs> it feels like a laser beam. You don't, There's no recoil on any weapon in this game. <laughs> it's pretty much the spiritual successor to the P90 because it's got that huge 50-round magazine. It's mm-hmm. got the big long clip on it. It looks exactly like it. It feels very similar. Yeah, it's a good gun. I mean, the so, weapon bouncing is fantastic. Like I was just saying, well, it's very it, They all just kill really fast. Yeah. <laughs> like every every weapon good. kills really fast. So i got to ask a question. I'm, I'm going to answer it and ask at the same time. Do you guys feel that uh, this is a viable purchase? Would you guys recommend someone buying this game based on what you've seen so far? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I'm going to hold off on it. Right, I, I, figured you'd be I, I put four that. hours into the game. I can't recommend a purchase off of that. Well, I'm going to recommend it based on this. It, it does have a campaign, right? Because a lot of these games are coming out without campaigns. A campaign uh, that neither one of you like, though. Well, it's neither here nor there for me. It I might get better, to be honest. I haven't played much of it. I, I, I don't know if it'll get better, Robbie. Uh, but I, I'm not going to say I totally disliked it. It just it wasn't engaging enough to keep me holding on. I, I didn't really care too much about what was going on, but it was fun to do, especially with somebody else. Yeah, uh, it's both had, like zombie mode, right? 
Yeah, that's actually really cool. Very hard. Zombies is amazing. Very in this game. difficult. Shadows of Evil is so good. It's tough though, because there's a lot of narrow hallways. But I love like the gobble gun machine. I love using the beast to open different uh, new doorways and different traps. Like zombies is the best it's ever been. It's phenomenal. I there's absolutely a lot love of it. people who buy these games just for zombies. I it's can see why. Really good. Yeah. Uh, I've never really been big on zombies. I think the first time I ever tried it was with Black Ops Two. Uh, but this one here is phenomenal. It's, it's its own game. It's a, a huge, so gigantic fun. map. So many uh, enemies, shit everywhere. You know, upgrading, buying new guns. This new monster mechanic you can turn into this creature and open up doors that you can't open with currency. It's just really, it's something different. But I, I really enjoyed that. And it's kind of like that 1940s, like noir style to it, which I love too. The map is super Plus, cool and detailed. And it looks awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. They got Ron Perlman, Jeff Goldblum. Even Marshawn Lynch is in the campaign, the football player, which is crazy. That's really cool. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend it. Uh, the multiplayer, if you like Call of Duty multiplayer, if you ever liked the multiplayer, this is some of the best you're going to get. Seems really fleshed out and robust. and has a great um, zombie mode. Story is okay, but you can play with up to three other people online, which is a huge yeah. plus for like the Call of Duty games. And I've already gotten at least eight hours in, and I'm, I'm super anxious to get back into it. So do I got my money's worth? Will I get it? Definitely. And I think if you like Call of Duty first-person shooters, it's kind of a no-brainer for me at this point. I know Briar's only been in it for four hours or so. I'd love to see what you say next week after some more extended play. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah. For me, it definitely is going to take an extended look before I'm ready to recommend it. Gotcha. There's no doubt about it, though. The value is phenomenal. You get this fantastic multiplayer and fantastic zombies. I definitely would recommend this game. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, it's nice to get in early on a Call of Duty game, because then when all the Christmas noobs showed up, <laughs> you know, yeah. you really you get that nice ramp on your KD. Yeah. Really, yeah. I mean, basically, I'm riding that ramp all year long on that <laughs> KD ratio. Oh man! Uh, unfortunately, in Destiny Trials of Osiris really fucked my KD up. But <laughs> oh man! Uh, okay, so are you guys done with Black Ops Three? Like, yes, you yes. Anything else want to talk about with Black Ops Three? Oh well, I'm curious to see what the guys who watched the the podcast think about it. You guys leave a comment if you're playing Black Ops Three. Is it yay or nay? Do you guys like it? Do you like the campaign? Do you like the multiplayer? Are you guys experiencing any of these netcode issues? Let us know in the comment section. We're ready yeah. to move on, guys. It's pretty much. I think we got about a month before all the YouTubers start saying this is the worst game that yeah. Call of Duty has ever made. That's and Advanced true. Warfare was the best. We got about, <laughs> we got about a week. Like Advanced Warfare was shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the flow of uh, the YouTuber oh, opinion on Call of Duty. Yeah, All right, so thing. Fallout 4 coming out next week. I, I asked you guys before. In two days. Yeah, yeah, in two days. I asked you guys before the podcast, what platform are you guys planning on getting this? I wish Not Too Nerdy was here to tell us why we're all stupid for not getting it for PC. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> okay. it's not. But what are you guys? what are you guys thinking? Uh, well, I, I'll say it again. I'm getting it on the PS4 because the majority of the people I play with are on that that console. Uh, I literally, ha- yeah, I literally have a handful of Xbox One uh, friends. I don't really play too many online games on my Xbox One. Like I said, I miss Titanfall. It's not an online game. Yeah, well, it's not. But oh well, I still I'm still gonna get it on PS4. Okay, <laughs> that's that's my console of choice. Um, that's the one I play with the most. Uh, it might be a good idea, but judging based on a lot of uh, Digital Foundry, pretty much everything that's a multi-plat is it performs slightly better on the PS4. And most yeah. people are going to get what performs better on. Like if you had a, a choice of a 900p TV and a 1080p TV, everybody's going to pick 1080p. And so for the most part, multi-plats perform a little bit better on the PS4, not by leaps and bounds. And uh, it's probably going to be the same case here. The thing is, though, the game is 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second on both consoles, and the fact is, Bethesda's been developing this game for ages, like four years now they've been developing this game, so I think it's going to be incredibly well-optimized, no matter what platform you choose. It's going to be an incredible game. Like, this, it's so hard to take it in because it's so close, but this could easily be one of the games of the generation, if it's anything like Fallout 3, because Fallout 3, probably one of the best games ever made, definitely one of the best open-world games ever made. It was... One of the best games in the last generation. Definitely one of my favorite games of all time. I still play it so much on PC. It is an amazing game. Well, like, well for, for me, it's, it's really 
Fallout 3 was one of the best games of all time to me. A lot of people really put Fallout against the Elder Scrolls. To me, Fallout is just a slightly better game for me because I enjoy that world a little bit more. Yeah, I think it comes uh, down to the preference the, of like what kind of your taste. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I'm gonna go out on a limb and, and and speculate that this will definitely be game of the year. I mean, there's a this lot. This game's not even out yet. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> game of the I year. Don't care. <laughs> it's fucking game of the year. That's what everyone's saying. Right. This is gonna be game of the year. What's going to, it's got some great contenders. It's got The Witcher 3, it's got Metal Gear Solid. Um, what else does it have? Guys? Anything else? Metal Gear? I don't know. Metal Gear? Uh, the King. King? Possibly. <laughs> These will be the only games that can really compete. And if it's if we go by history of Bethesda, what they release, other than The Evil Within, uh, this game is going to be fucking insane. I'm super excited about it, man. The game looks great. Um... A lot of people don't understand the dynamic of these Western RPGs, but for me, this is going to be something that's going to take me away from everything else. Yeah. I know there are going, going to be a lot of people get fired after Tuesday. After Tuesday. Be, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of relationships are going to end after Tuesday. You know, a lot I, of people are going to be calling in sick this week. Like I, I, I was on Facebook, and I was reading this girl's post. She, she was saying, uh, Kate showed it to me. She said, I've been spending so much time with Jimmy this last week or two. He's been hanging out with me, we've been, you know, having romantic dinners and doing all this shit because he's already told me after Fallout 4 comes out, it's over. He's getting those brownie points added Hell up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. You know, Fallout 4 is coming. Everybody get ready for that shit. Yeah, that, that game is going to be a time suck. You know it is, too. Yeah. They always are. You look at it. Yeah, we were talking about the value that Black Ops 3 presents. I mean, this is, like, the best value for any game ever, and every minute of it Come is on, incredible. Come on, guys. Come on. Tone it down a little bit. <laughs> game of the year, the best value ever. <laughs> the game's not even out yet. <laughs> it's going to be how many hundreds of hours? Like, a huge open world? You, you, know, know, you have no idea how long it's going to be. Well, The Witcher 3 is hundreds of hours, too. But um, I, I won't say, as far as value, you don't know what you're going to get. But um, I will definitely say it, it's, it's a great possibility this will be a game of the year contender. Yeah, this I mean, just the next step for open world. Games. I'm excited for it too, and I think it's going to be good. If it's as good as Bla- as Fallout Three, then I'm already like in love with it, right? Yeah, that's all. It's only got to be as good as Fallout Three because I love Fallout Three. I love Fallout New Vegas. It's only got to be that good, and I'm going to love it. I already know that. Do you uh, guys but think... We have no idea if there's going to be technical yeah. problems. We don't know if there's going to be like some kind of like. You know, bait and switch. We have no idea what's going on with this game. <laughs> well, I'm optimistic because the game went gold early. Mm-hmm. That, that's a really good sign. That is me. a good sign. That I mean, um, to be to get go gold early means they had a lot of extra time to yeah, polish the, the game. Yeah. yeah, so I'm super excited about it. I don't know what the value of the game will be because no one knows it's going to be. You the know, value means different things to different people. Yeah, yeah. but for me, uh, it's a Fallout game. And you really can't lose a fallout. I'm super excited about it. And everything I have is going to stop Tuesday. We just Did got Call of Duty. I'm not going to play this game. I'm not going to play in The Last of Us. All that shit. I just uh, threw Batman in today for the first time. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. That's over Tuesday. <laughs> Everything's over Tuesday. Pretty much. I mean, do you guys think Fallout 3 was obviously like a monumental step forward? Like That game was incredible. Is there any chance that Fallout 4 can exceed that? Like, will this be, like, the next step for open-world games? Will it be an even better game? Or will it literally just be a prettier, more high Fallout 3? Because even if it's that, like, that's going to be incredible. I'll tell you what I'm hoping for. How about that? Yeah. Here's what I'm hoping for. I want it to be as good as Fallout 3 with a more detailed and richly textured landscape, uh, better characters. You know, well, the characters in Fallout 3 were amazing, but, like... Uh, I would, I'd like to see characters like with uh, faces that don't look hideously ugly every time <laughs> you see them on screen. Uh, more characters, more NPC interaction, uh, just a more a more vibrant world. Because with the technical limitations of the PS4 and the Xbox One compared to the the technical limitations of the 360 and like that era of hardware, I feel like they've got a lot more headroom, a lot more room to play with that stuff. I'm less interested in the graphics and more interested in what they can do to kind of enrich the world. Uh, just make it feel more alive. And how that's immersive really is it going to be, too? To. Yeah, What's I want to see how immersive this world is as well. Like, if it really pulls you in. Like, I can't wait to play it with just a surround sound, headphones on, no one, like, in a party chat, just alone, just immersing in the game. I think it's going to be incredible. Like, yeah, I got a hotel if... reservation. I'm going to be staying in a hotel for the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't tell my wife. Holy <laughs> I think I'm gone. She'll be so happy to see me when I get back. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Caveat. She might be pretty mad, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell her what I've been doing. I'm going to tell her I was kidnapped. I, I, I remember what Robbie said at the beginning of a statement. You said that uh, Fallout 3 yeah, was really groundbreaking and whatnot. What came out first? Was it Fallout 3 or, uh, or um, the Elder Scrolls uh, Oblivion? Oblivion? Oblivion came out second. It came out second. No, that, was, no, that was first. That was 2006. No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oblivion, then Skyrim. Okay, yeah. Oblivion okay. came out before. Yeah. Because to me, Oblivion was probably more of a, a world-altering game. When that game came out, it was everywhere. Everybody was going crazy over it. And I think that Fallout 3 kind of followed suit on that world. Yeah. And kind of built on that. My Maybe problem, the- so I, I was technically impressed with Oblivion, but I didn't have any fun playing it. Oh, okay. But, I had a really? blast. Yeah, Fallout for me, it's just a more interesting world. It's a more interesting... I, I don't like fantasy that much. You know, like that, like swords and sorcery. It's just not my thing. How did you but, feel about Skyrim, then? I didn't really... It's, it's technically very impressive, but it's just not how I... Same thing. You feel okay. I, yeah. I've never really found any game that's really done swords well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I always feel like yeah. it was... A, like, almost like a... Like a Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe. That's how I always feel whenever I'm using a sword in a video game. Well, this is my situation with uh, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. I had never played an Elder Scrolls game before. I bought Morrowind on the original Xbox. Yeah. And I didn't... I put it in, I was like, what the hell is this? I don't want to play this shit. I was never on a PC before, up until that point in time. So to me, it came across like a PC game, and I didn't want to get into it. I was like, what? It's ugly, I don't want to play it. And then all this fervor came out about Oblivion, and everybody was going crazy, and all the game magazines, game of the year. And so I bought it. Look who's here, guys. Yeah, so I bought it. <laughs> I <laughs> bought it on uh, PS3 and started playing it, and I didn't get into it. And then everybody was like, man, you just spent $60 on that game. You need to go back home and play it, play it, play it. Everybody at GameStop. And so I bought the uh, strategy guide, which I still have. It's like this thick. I started reading it. I was like, "There's all this shit in this game." I started figuring it out, and I started playing it. And I swear that that game was one of the best gaming experiences I ever had. Oblivion. Not I enough really Patrick started... Stewart. That was really disappointing. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, we got us a special, special. Uh, we just summoned him. Sorry. It Not too many entertainment. What's up, man? I was working till five. I know I get, dude, you guys started five o'clock now. No, no, no. Really? Today's a special day. Uh, okay. Mr. Rabbit has uh, later obligations, so we. Okay. Uh, kind of altered our regular time to accommodate his later time. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. Uh, so you guys, I, I heard you guys talk about Fallout 4, so I thought i will chime in. I was yeah. excited. I just said preloaded it for P, uh, PC yesterday. So it's all Here set. Here we go. Waiting for as soon as, <laughs> it, as soon as it's midnight. I'm going to start playing exactly midnight. You know, I'm kind of excited. You know, hopefully it's not a glitchy mess like Black Ops 3 on the PC. But Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, uh, Beastly and Robbie have already uh, christened it Game of the Year and the best value for video games ever. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, Fallout 4? Yeah. yeah. The, the games didn't even come out yet? <laughs> yeah, they killed it, man. They're, they they have reviewed this game. They've given it 9 out of 13 stars. Damn right. <laughs> wow. That's... Okay. <laughs> I mean, nice. I'm marketing this game more than Bethesda has, so you're welcome, Bethesda. Exactly. This is free marketing. <laughs> oh man, what a damn show! Seriously yeah. though, guys, like I don't see how Fall War can't like blow us all away. At least be like an amazing game because I think you look at Oblivion, ten out of ten. Fall War was like another ten out of ten game. Skyrim was another incredible game. Like I don't see how they really can do anything less than that. Like well, even if it is not quite as good, it's still going to be a phenomenal game in every way. I don't really see where they can go wrong. Like, like, every think, way. You just said it right now. Like, <laughs> you, you just I'm said done. it right now. Every other game was a 10 out of 10, right? Well, that's why. So there's high expectation for this one. So that's why you, they're setting a bar pretty high for themselves. So now exactly. anything that's not reaching that is not going to be perfect in people's minds. So that's why they have a lot to live up to. So it's kind of it's going to be kind of hard, well, you know. Here's a question, guys. Is it possible that Bethesda can actually live up to the hype? I, I mean, that's a, a lot of fucking hype. I think it is, but <laughs> it's a lot of hype. Nice. <laughs> it's a lot of hype, man. I think if anyone could, it could it'll be Bethesda. So if that if that answers your question. If anyone could, it'll be them. But then again, I don't know if anyone can live up to this hype because this is 
people have been talking about Fallout 4 for a long time. You know? This is the big one. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is as hype as I've ever seen. Yeah. This is <laughs> as big of a game as it gets. Like, this is, like, the big one. Like, the one every single damn person is excited for. Not just, like, kind of excited. It's like you're, like, pumped, and you can't wait another goddamn minute for this game. That's how everyone feels. And people, I, people were so excited about this that they got other people who had never played Fallout 3 <laughs> excited about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I have people I've talked to who are, like, excited about Fallout 4. I'm like, did you play Fallout 3? They're like, no. Damn. Or, or... Yeah, I played it this summer because so many people told me to play it that I yeah. wanted to play it before I played Fallout 4. Yeah. My yeah. best friend has never played Fallout 3, and I gave him a code You're for the wrong, the wrong crowd. Crowd. backwards compatibility. I'm like, you have to play this game. It's incredible. Robbie, like, we got to have a talk about who you're hanging out with, man. Clapper? Man, two year olds played Fallout 3 before. All right, we have 17 minutes to go through all the news. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> Who wants to start it off? All right, Black Ops 3 on PC to introduce modding and map tools in early 2016. That's awesome. Awesome. Will the game, will the game work? Will it work in 2016? Not too nerdy. Well, here's the thing. I got my, it got, I got it to work with mine. But the thing is, like, my specs are pretty high. The problem is, like, you need an i7 right away. If you have i5, i3, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Really? So you need an i7 chip. That's number one. Number two, the specs. I finally tweaked out the specs. Everything is on high settings. There's one that's extreme settings, but uh, and also I had to do anti-alias um, to two times. So like I had to literally go through each list and I'm marking it down to see which is the specs. And I finally found it. And that's just to get like a steady 60 frames per second and at 1080p. So yeah. my graphics card should be doing 1440p. And the problem is you're looking at 1080p and I'm tweaking all these settings just to get 1080p. And yeah. that's not acceptable at all. That just means that yeah. it, it's a it's a mess, you know. All right. Well, speaking of messes, PC version of Black Ops Three is facing major issues at launch. Not too nerdy. Would you, would you like to elaborate very quickly on the subject? Yeah. I, I, just real quick. Um, I had a video I posted up when I was trying to go to the zombie game. It says four player max, but yet they're trying to match you up with fifteen yeah. players. Yeah. There's yeah. 15 players on the board, and it says one player max. <laughs> and, and as soon as it connects, it disconnects everyone because obviously it can't fit four, 15 players in a four-player max. It was mode. doing the same thing to us yesterday in multiplayer. Yeah, uh, it was trying to match us with 14, 15 people. Oh, it did that for, for PS4 as well? Yeah. So, it does so. happen often, though. It was, it was just for multiplayer. There's supposed to be, what, 12 people max? 12 and then people. there's like 15 people in the lobby? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the funny thing is it worked for the beta. Well, how did how does the beta work, and then it comes out the real game, and it's worse than the beta? I've never well, really seen it. Yeah. I just hope, I hope that it's taken care of soon, because I'm having a lot of fun with the game. Let's move on to Activision. They have acquired developer King for $5.9 billion. Guys, they could have bought Lucas. They could have bought the Star Wars trilogy. But instead, Activision bought King, and that's the company that makes uh, – what's the name of that little Android game? Candy Crush. Candy Crush. For $5.9 billion. I think this is a dumb purchase because, it, to give some context, I believe Disney acquired Star Wars for something like $3.6 billion. Yeah. So this is worth more than Star Wars. Like, are you sure about that? I don't think this is a very good acquisition at all. Like, this is ridiculous. Guys, I, I got this new thing I'm coming up with. It's called Candy Loops. And uh, what you do is you draw loops on your screen, right, to get the candy to come through. <laughs> Uh, it's new much. on iOS and Android. Uh, it'll, it's free to play, but there's in-app purchases, of course. And, uh, you know, Activision, call me. Give me a billion. Look, I think it's a great idea, to be honest with you. I mean, some people buy spinners, some people go to strip clubs, and some people show off money by buying Candy Crush. I mean, loops. Yeah. loops. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're just showing off their money, I guess. I don't know what they did. I don't know why it's going to be a huge cash cow or a huge flop, and I'm honestly not sure which way it's going to go. I have no it idea seems like every stuff. time you hear about one of these acquisitions of like a mobile game that's like super hot, as soon as it gets acquired, it just drops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it just dies. Well, I guess only time will tell, guys. I've never played Candy Crush. I know a lot of people who do, though. 
So, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people with very tight suits on sitting around talking about this acquisition, and they came to the realization that it was a viable purchase. So only time will tell. Activision, guys, has opened a new film studio called Activision Blizzard Studios. Yeah, I'll read the article, too, if you guys like. Speed read. You remember the uh, Micro Machines commercial? You like that. <laughs> so it says, in an Investor Day presentation leading up to BlizzCon, because that just happened a couple days ago, Activision announced Activision Blizzard Studios, a new division of the company focused on creating original films and TV shows. So they've never done anything like this. Like, Activision is purely about video games. Now they're going to be making feature films and TV shows. The first film project announced for the studio is a robust cinematic universe based on the Call of Duty franchise, planned to include oh, a series of Call of Duty films as well as the possibility of television adaptations. No timing or additional information was released, but the first Call of Duty movie is expected in 2018 or 2019. Wow. What do you think? I don't... That's a good idea. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean, that's actually... I love that cow Activision, you know? Like that. Yeah, so. it's better than spending $6 billion on Candy Crush. That's, yeah. that's a really smart acquisition era, a, a new studio that makes sense to me. I don't think you guys realize how much... Activision makes so. Now, Activision makes so much money. Like, and if you're just looking on the PC side, like those games make more money than the other games. And like, if you th- would think, okay, how's PC making more than Call of Duty games? You, they got like the top from Blizzard. Like those games alone make so yeah. much more money. You know, two so that, that's the reason why they have money to spend. And I mean, why not? Like, just. Just make everything. Activision has unlimited cash, and I mean, this is like they've dominated the video game industry. I don't think there's much more they need to do, and I think this is a lot more, a lot smarter for them than developing like or acquiring King, because this is something that's going to last. They have this huge development studio. Now they're moving into filmmaking. Hmm. I'm so interested to see how this turns out. Because I mean, they actually, if they player. somehow can take their brands, so, you know, like World World of Warcraft, Call of Duty you know, Skylanders, you know, like all of their like main brands and treat them like Marvel has with their brands in the movie oh, theaters. I mean, they, I think they'd get a lot of gamers into theaters and buying Blu-rays of that stuff. I think yeah, right. they got to do it with quality. They got to do it with care and quality. Like yeah, Starcraft. Starcraft. Yeah, that's like huge. Like that's yeah. one of the biggest too. Like it's just insane how much money they make. They have the biggest franchise. But the history of video game movies is not good. It's hard to make good video game movies because right. you know the stories aren't really that good. And, and Yui Bo is still alive. <laughs> Yui Bo has destroyed movie, uh, video game movies. Uh, I think okay. that's because developers want so much to do with the movie instead of letting the other people get the, you know to do it on their own. So that's why they you know they have the money to let other people make the movie and just give it to them to make it. Then it'll be different. You know, someone like Disney or someone else had it, like like what they do in Marvel stuff. You never know how it could turn yeah. out. So, could be good. I mean, it was a long time where comic book movies sucked bad too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Captain America. All right, guys. So, Sky- <laughs> Skyrim was ported to the Xbox One as part of as part of Fallout 4's development early on. I actually uh, heard about this story uh, earlier in the week. That uh, I'm trying to remember the, the man's name who actually does most of the development on the Fallout series. Todd he actually, Howard. Todd, yeah, Todd Howard. He actually um, ported ported it over and it worked fine, but he did not want to release it uh, and actually release it for yeah. for sale. He just wanted to port it to see how well it would work. There is no HD remaster of Skyrim coming for current gen. They said that's at least for now. That's not happening. Like, don't. That's not what this means. This just means they were getting ready for Fallout Four. And that's how they wanted to prepare with the new consoles. Like, get used to the architectures doing this. That was Imagine just the first step. You're playing Fallout 4, right? And you come across a computer in some, like, kind of weird-ass place in, like, the wasteland of Boston. You boot it up, and up comes Skyrim. And you oh, sit there shit. and play Skyrim. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'd be nuts. <laughs> All right, so this is, consider this a PSA, guys, especially for the people out there on Xbox Ones. Xbox One owners may have downloaded the wrong file for Fallout 4 for the preload. Yeah, it's called so if you Xbox the game. One OS. That's hardcore. If you guys pre-order before, I believe it's October 27th, just to be cautionary, de- delete the game if you have it downloaded and re-download again. Don't, because then you'll have to suffer through the pain I did with Halo 5 where I downloaded the wrong file and had to wait all over again when my friends played through the campaign and I didn't get to experience it. Just delete the game and reinstall it. Don't take the risk because it might not start out. 
you might have done the wrong thing. And the people that get on PC, be careful because it's going to be just like Grand Theft Auto 5 in the way that it's going to have a preload a certain amount, and then afterwards it's going to do double the amount, and they're going to compress it afterwards. So Oof. if you try to put on your SSD and you don't have enough storage and you try to do it later, that's going to cause problems. So you want to make sure that you put it in a safe location and you have enough memory first. Otherwise, it would be twice the space. So delete so. delete uh, Microsoft Office off before you yeah. try and move it up. <laughs> no, you definitely <laughs> should put this on your SSD if you have it. This is going to be one of those games where it will come in handy to load the profile. So just All to right. let you know. Okay, guys, so continuing with the saddest love story since The Notebook, Konami has shut down Kojima Studios uh, in L.A., and um, it's official. The, the studios have actually been closed now. Any thoughts or ideas? This is the studio behind Metal Gear Online, not Metal Gear. Yeah, I put that in the notes. Yeah. This is a different thoughts? studio. So, oh, okay. I mean, Konami, they're always in the news with this. Like, there are some... There was a news story about the whole Kojima Konami controversy and Metal Gear thing every single week. Like it's constant. It never seems to end. I mean, it's well, done with video so games. They're done with their like video games as we know them. They're they, getting they out of the industry. They, they yeah. say that they're actually going to be working on full fledged AAA Metal Gear Solid uh, titles in the future. Which Thanks confuses so. me because they're they're getting out of it, but all of a sudden they're like, oh no, we got another game coming. Like make up your damn mind. What if this is like WWE and Kojima actually still work for them and they were just trying to get all this? excitement and frustration aimed towards Kojima and Konami, and then they, you find out a year or two later they've been working together the whole time. That really pissed me off. They said he's on vacation recently, too. That's what they said. And he hadn't left the studio. Like, I just was like, come on, when I saw that. <laughs> just don't. Okay. And, Robbie, uh, I think you're the only... Brian, did you ever get Halo 5? Yeah, I got it. Halo 5 Guardian sees the biggest launch in franchise history, history, history. I said it three times. Damn. I want to see the numbers for that because I want to know if that's included the microtransactions because I know they had a lot of microtransactions. So the people buy a lot of stuff and they're adding the money or they're adding the actual copies. That's what I, I want to see. I would hope they're talking about actual copies. That would be very – There was a separate story of the amount of how much they made off the microtransactions. I'm pretty sure it's separate. It's, this is just copies sold. They're talking about total because there's a, they're, they're including the money. All they suspect was the money – I want to see how many copies are sold because now I'm curious because I know they had the bundles with the console, and mm -hmm. then they had actual copies, and then they also had a lot of microtransactions, which almost everyone – I know a lot of people got the microtransactions because they actually helped you out in the beginning, but it's not like pay to win supposedly, but – no, I have to admit I bought quite a few. And then see, I have to say everyone's like, I'm not gonna buy it, but then people end up buying. It. <laughs> like, it's addicting. You can't help it. Like, you open one, it's like, oh, one more. Then you open it, it's like, oh, just one more. You can't stop. It's crazy. Speaking, speaking of microtransactions, Brian, how many emos have you purchased? I bought them all. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> just curious. I, just I, like, I literally make a living from that, you guys. Like, <laughs> of course I'm gonna buy them all. You bought them all. Good shit. <laughs> But it's like being like a having a car dealership and not having any cars on a lot. Like that's I drive a bike. To <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right. So the last little bit of news we got, guys, is from Sony about Sony. Shooter fans are switching over to the PlayStation Four of this generation. Says Sony. You guys agree with that? I, I kind of do. I, I do. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like uh, anyone who's going to play on PS4 probably already owned a PS3 last generation. I mean, I'm not sure this is partly true, but... There's tons of people who didn't own a PS3 last generation. And they're dumb, because phones. you missed out on a lot of exclusives that were fantastic. Yeah, well... They, yeah, they you're dumb, because been... you didn't have $400 to spend on a fucking... Tell them, tell them, Exactly. <laughs> you're dumb. I, I say shooters go to a console that has the most people playing on it, so there's more people to play with, and that's why the PlayStation and Elite. Same thing if Xbox One had more people, they would have been there. That's it's all it is. They, they go to wherever the most people are so they can play with the most people because there's more matches. So I think yeah. it's yes. The answer is yes. MLG <laughs> is switching over to PS4s, which I think is, you know, uh, it shows something. Uh, they were 360 last generation. Uh, Call of Duty mm -hmm. switching to lead platform PS4, That's which I think said something. You know, Battlefront is on PS4 on lead platform. Destiny, yeah, it, yep, it Destiny. does appear that way. Not too nerdy. Yes. You very seldom join the show because you're so busy, and we understand that. But since you're here, I'd like to hear your take. I want to ask you a question. What can Microsoft do in order to turn this around? Now, we know that the PS4 is about $12, $13 million a hit. Is it too late for them? What can they do to actually level the playing field 
I'm just really curious as to your, or is it already over in your eyes? Let me know. I think what they're doing right now, it's like to stop talking about the competition and just bring what you have because that's the only way you're going to get your gamers back is to show your games. Like Halo 5, that's that's your thing. Halo made billions of dollars for Microsoft, you know. Like that's your billion-dollar franchise. Stick with it. Do the things that you do best and that's it. And, like, you'll get people back when you start doing what you do best. You know, if you keep working on certain things that you have advantage over the PS4, which is the updates, you know, if you look at the Xbox One, it, it's the most updated console. It has the best updates, and it does what people want it to do. And, I mean, if you comp- competition-wise, I don't know if they're ever going to catch a PlayStation 4. They might, they might not. But then again, if you flipped it around, the PS3 caught up to the uh, Xbox 360 and even surpassed it, like, mm-hmm. barely, but they surpassed it towards the end. You know, so it could happen again. Who knows? But the you way the PS3 know what's going to happen. Yeah, the way the PS3 turned around is by listening to the people and trying to do what gamers wanted, and they started bringing the games. You know, they started taking chances on exclusives. That's the one thing, though. Microsoft doesn't do as well as Sony, though. They, I don't think they take as big as chances as Sony's. I mean, Sony, that might be their fault, Sony, but. Sony takes chances, you know. Look at Bloodborne. You know, Bloodborne is a chance, and it, it paid off a little bit. You know, they they take Until chances. Until dawn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They take chances, and it might fail. It might be successful. They take chances, and that's the thing. I think Xbox has to start doing that also, because yeah. otherwise, people are gonna realize that okay, now all the shooters that used to be just Microsoft, people are now playing shooters on PS4. So at what what do you have in Xbox One that you can offer me that's separate from the PS4? That's you know, the thing. That's the thing. You're absolutely right. They got a few pivotal franchises on the Microsoft front. Sony does have more. And Microsoft, instead of just sticking with those, they need to continually innovate and make new. Halo is a big franchise, though. It's a huge franchise. It's, huge. it's, it's, the it's problem bigger with Halo than. Is, look at the month they came out in. Who's the people are playing Halo right now? A lot of people jump shipped already to Black Ops. A lot of that's the rest Robbie. of people, Robbie already did. The ready people are going to go to Star Wars. When Star Wars comes out, they're going to jump that ship too. They literally lost all their players, and on top of it. The Tomb Raider exclusive, it's coming out the same day as Fallout. Like, oh, fuck. You have know, to space it out better than that, the way they did it. You know, and I think that's some of their faults. Like, they had great lineups. They had great games, but they're spaced together, and, like, they're going against each other. Imagine so, if Halo yeah. 5 had been, like, a January or February release. Oh, man, they would have had all that... Time they would have crushed it. They sales. would have crushed it. Yeah. They would have lost out on the holiday sales, but they would have had, they would have had the marketplace to themselves. Yeah. And the press to themselves yeah. too. The press like would have. Honestly, that. Robbie, are you still playing uh, Halo Five, or are you exclusively on Black Ops right now? I play it somewhat. Like I play it every couple days. I haven't played it for a bit now. Like the multiplayer is a lot of fun, but yeah, I, I just prefer Call of Duty multiplayer. Damn it, they fucked up. They Halo didn't. is well, Halo is a completely different experience multiplayer wise. It's a, it's, it's much slower different. time to kill. It's yeah. more it's a more precise game. You have a lot to of hip you know, firing too. What's that? A lot of hip firing because there's a, a lot, lot of hip firing. Weapons. You, yeah. It's just a it's a different type of game. One would say a higher skill game. You know, you have yeah. to be accurate for long periods of time. Uh, you have to team shot. You have to coordinate with your team to to be successful. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a totally different kind of game. All right, Did you so just say team for multiplayer. Oh mm-hmm. man, that's <laughs> that's well, hard I'm, to do. I'm hoping I can Call of Duty. Yeah. Well, you know, in Call of Duty, you're gonna see oftentimes somebody go through, go on like a five or six kill streak where you know there's three guys in a room and they might spray all three of them down, you know, in quick succession. You're not gonna see that in Halo. It's mm-hmm. just not doesn't happen. You know, if there's three guys in a room. You go into that room by yourself. You're gonna get sprayed yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It takes a lot more ammo to kill people too in Halo Five. Right. Slower time to kill faster. usually means it's a higher skilled game. It's definitely faster than older Halos. It's definitely more yeah. like Call of Duty than the previous games, but it's still more slow. But it's not a slow game. It's still fast paced. But all right, guys, I gotta wrap this one up. We gotta end this show here because I've gotta jump on the Extra Life uh, stream. Uh, we're gonna have a lot more to talk about next week. That's for damn sure. Uh, we got Fallout 4 coming out. I'm sure we're going to have some more Black Ops 3 talk. Anybody want to pimp anything at the end of the show here? Uh, you guys go on over and check out the stream, man. That would be so good to watch Beastly's Thoughts and just go straight over to a stream half an hour later. That's fucking awesome. Uh, check out my channel if you guys want to see what I'm up to and into. i got some great videos coming this, this week. I just rendered 16 last night. Uh, balancing greatness is another great topic that i got coming out. Um, going to be playing some Call of Duty, uh, hopefully. 
if I find time to play a little bit of uh, Batman, I'll do that as well. But that'll be me for the week. Robbie, not too nerdy. What do you guys want to say? Uh, I yeah. have a Black Ops 3 first impressions going up, probably of multiplayer. I might go through the whole game. That should be up tomorrow. So that's really about it. I might do some other stuff too. I have a bunch of games going up. I'm going to be playing live streaming a lot of games. So I'm going to be live streaming my, my PC. I'm going to do Fallout 4. I'm going to be doing Black Ops 3 and Overwatch. I got entered for the beta. So I'm going to be showing that right there. So live streaming easy. on Twitch or on YouTube? I'm going to do both, like switch back and forth, Damn. but mostly on YouTube, I think. Because I can do a higher bit rate there, so I'll try YouTube for a while. So, awesome. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to be jumping on to the uh, Extra Life stream uh, in about half an hour here. So you go on over to twitch.tv backslash guardians underscore give underscore back. Uh, and uh, donate to the cause, you know, be supportive. Even if you don't have money to donate, you know, tweet it out, you know, get it some get it some views, get some other people in there. We'd really appreciate it. It's for, a, again, a great cause. Extra Life is a really cool thing, uh, and I'll be over there. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week. Take All care, right, everybody. Guys. Bye. Bye.